Hey, what's going down, y'all? Your boy Rob G, aka Roberto Valley. This is a new thing that we bring to y'all. It's called Talk To Him Tuesdays. Basically, uh, trying to keep it fresh, trying to keep it new, uh, bringing new topics that we can talk about. Not only so that I can, you know, share myself, my thoughts, and my opinions with y'all, but so that maybe also I can grow from y'all, learning y'all's opinions and how y'all feel about stuff. So, uh, with that being said, this is Talk To Him Tuesdays, man. What y'all want to? How y'all want to start it off today? Man, I want to start off, bro. Tell them a little bit about yourself, bro. I like about how, like, how you know, how, just. How to, game and uh, how, I started, how I started where I'm going yeah, everything I mean, that happened what, what, what you what you looking forward to <clears throat> well you know I think that's real I think you're right I think we should start like that being it's the first one yeah. let them know what's been going on you know the reasons how I got here the reasons why I had to step away and where we're going from now well, I mean for that being said I guess uh, just giving a background about me I started this music stuff pretty much like fresh out of high school you know and it was just became just a passion and a love for me just something that I wanted to do uh, I, I was into the MCing type side of things, you know what I mean? I, I, I loved especially the H-Town movement and all that, uh, the, the culture with it, and then I followed all the other big hip-hop artists and rappers and just, you know, fell in love with the whole concept of expressing yourself through through your thoughts and through rhymes, and uh, that's kind of how it started for me. And uh, I, I kind of just set on my journey just like everybody else would in the music business, you know? I went about it just started making music and doing shows, battle rapping. I mean, that's how I kind of got on at first, doing the whole battle rapping stuff, for those that don't know. Question, man. Yeah. When did you start rapping? When I started rapping? And when you started taking it serious? Well, I started rapping just messing around like in high school. You know, being from H-Town, we grew up in that whole little freestyle culture and stuff like that. So I was always a Hispanic kid on the back of the bus, on the way to ball games or something, you know what I mean? Just busting rhymes with the homies and stuff like that. So it just kind of went from there. And then I had a partner of mine, you know, just, man, you ever took it serious? You start, you know, writing songs and doing this and that. And, you know, we just started getting in the lab. And from there, when I understood, you know, how to write a song as far as in measurements, bars, 16, stuff like that, then, you know, that's when I started actually making music. And then from there goes the process of learning the business and getting your team together, your brand and all that. So, I mean, I, I literally started from, you know, just like everybody else to do this, man. Made a movement for myself. Like I was saying, um, I ended up, you know, doing some battle rap and stuff way back. I'm talking about 2003, 2004, five around that time, you know. And I ended up, long story short, I ended up, you know, being one of the top battle rappers in my region. You know, got to go on MTV, do a MTV battle and all that stuff. I got disqualified for cussing. Shout out to my boy Sway and all them boys from MTV, man. <laughs> but uh, and from there, you know, I just, again, I knew that wasn't going to be all the, the, the answer to my problems, so I just kept doing my thing. I kept kept kind of putting together my business, making songs, trying to put out independent stuff. Ended up getting signed, you know, had repping my block, my big record from there. You know, I was able to get on records like Latino Stand Up, uh, which made movies. I did stuff with Frankie. I did stuff pretty much every single artist in H-Town, you know what I mean, as far as uh, collaborations and stuff like that. And yeah, I was fortunate in that aspect. Got a major deal with Universal and toured, you know what I mean, was able to go all over the place and do my thing. And uh, experienced a lot, really, you know what I mean? So I kind of got to, had a nice little crash course in music. I was blessed, a lot of people, you know, go through years and years and years and years of grinding before they ever do anything. And, and honestly, for me, man, like I was actually fortunate. I was just a couple years deep and I was able to already kind of be in a position where I can get a major deal and all that stuff. So that is not to solve all, though. You know, I learned a lot about the game, too. I mean, it's not just about getting a deal. It's, you know, you got what you're going to do after you get that deal. So, <clears throat> I mean, I went through all that, man. I had a lot of success. Unfortunately, there was a point in my life where like real life kicked in, too. You know, I was midway touring all over the country. I had toured in South America, Central America, doing a lot of Spanish work too. And uh, for those that, that don't know out there, I went through some personal shit where uh, my wife at the time, son of my, my, my son's mother had uh, been diagnosed with cancer and she had got to the point where she was like terminally ill and all that. So that's why I kind of had to back up off the game, make the music second, you know what I mean? And kind of just focus on, you know, being there for my family and everything. And unfortunately, she had passed away some years ago now. And at that time, I just kind of had to put everything on pause. At that time, it just so happened like I was in all the big media, Source, Double XL. I was doing everything, you know. And uh, but yeah, so that's when it kind of got real. That's why, in a sense, I was always kind of dealing with that while the whole music shit was taking off. As far as me doing all this stuff, so it's like I never really got to like let it soak in all the things that I was able to accomplish and actually do because of you know just going through personal shit, man. 
So, uh, yeah, she passed away, rest in peace. And uh, from then, you know, it's real, you're a single father, you know, it's not just about what you're doing, stuff like that. Uh, I was actually blessed, you know, I, I had went through that, but then, you know, the music picked up. I always had a good support system as far as around me, as far as like, you know, my mother and my sisters and stuff, people to help me with my son and uh, keeping him in a, in, a, in a home environment, you know what I mean, and doing the best I can. But at the same time, this game, like, it asks a lot of you, you know, you can't just stay still. You So I was, even even when when everything picked back up, like, you know, I had, I had got with my homeboy Trey, you know, big shot to Trey the Truth, man, one of the dudes that taught me a lot about the game. And, and I mean, just being out there and <clears throat> really riding for your shit, you know what I mean? Like, that's something that, that I really learned from him. I, I went on the road with him. We put out a couple of projects together that both sides of the fence did really, really well. I'm talking about <laughs> 50 racks on the table well, you know what I mean? Like we actually sold some units and, and, and made some money. And uh, not only that, just the experience alone, you know, just going out there and knowing that, hey, I'm, I, I position myself to where I can do independent stuff and I can make independent money and I can self-sustain. So, you know, Trey, shout out to you, man. Appreciate the things you taught me when we was out there. You know, after that, I ended up going on tour with Pitbull, another person, shout out Chico, congrats to everything you're doing, man. Another guy that took me under his wing and taught me a whole, whole lot about the game, you know, and uh, that was on some major shit. We was touring all over the country at the time, and uh, big shot Chavez, everybody out there at Latium, looking out, good looking. And uh, yeah, man, so I mean, it seemed like everything was picking up, but at the same time, I was kind of just dealing with a lot of personal shit with the whole passing of my my son's uh my son's mother's still kind of fresh and and i was, you know it's, it's difficult man it's hard because it's like you, you're doing what you love and i'm doing what i love with the music and stuff but then consciously though i, I was always thinking about my son i was like dang like there was just times where i just felt like like you know he he more needed me there and i just wasn't like cool with what was going on it was always like this conflict like is this the right shit like is this the right time for me to be doing what i'm doing right now or uh, am, am I being selfish? Am I being selfish by just, you know, yeah, well, this is my career and this is what I do. So that, that way, if I have to be gone for months at a time, I mean, that's what it is. You know, is that fair to my man, uh, my little man, you know, and just things like that, that I just kind of had to deal with on the fly. And it's a, it's a reality check for you, you know, you're like, this shit didn't got real. So it did reach a point, man, and, and it's crazy. Just as a man, I was making tons of money. I was... I was, I had everything, I mean, everything was balanced out, but man, I just didn't feel right, man. I didn't feel I was going in the right direction. I know I made a lot of mistakes as far as uh, getting caught up in, 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 the, in the good side of the game. I, I guess the, the fun shit, you know what I mean? The, the going out and the partying, you know? And then, and then again, I did have that system of support, so there was times where, you know, I'm, I'm out there and, you know, you're doing shows, you're doing appearances, that's just part of it, you know? And I, I got caught up in that. You know, I, I feel like it, things was just a blur. I, I didn't really know if I had the right people around me. I had that constant conflict whether, you know, if I was doing the right thing as far as being gone or being home. So it really came down to the point, man, and it was actually one of the biggest blessings. But I just had to put everything to the side and just start from scratch, man. I mean, lost friends along the way, you know what I mean? I lost a lot of people that I was close to. You know, we all men got egos, you know, we all have some form of ego, you know what I mean? So a lot of times I didn't want to tell people, like, man, I'm figuring shit out. Like, this ain't just about music to me. You know, a lot of the people that I was surrounded with, they were surrounded with me based off music, you know? Shout out to my, my boys from SWAT, man. And uh, it was difficult for me to kind of, that always looked to me as kind of, I was the one that was supposed to be kind of leading the way and all that, you know? And there was a, a moment where I felt that, that vulnerability, where, where it was like, man, I don't know if I can do this shit, you know? And I really had to like, I got to get right as a man before anything. Like the money was there, the, the the fame was there, everything was there, but it just still didn't feel right. You know, I felt like my priorities was fucked up. You know what I mean? And I don't know if it was God. I mean, well, now I believe that that it did have something to do with God, just kind of <clears throat> putting you through certain paths and making you go through certain things so you can end up being a certain way. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's why I kind of had to go through those things. But lost friends, you know, uh, along the way. Very humbling experience, man, you know what I mean? At the same time, very gratifying, you know what I mean? To know that, that, that after a while you'd be like, you know, I did put aside what I really wanted to do and what a lot of people probably wouldn't put aside and I did put my family first, you know? I did put 
me becoming the right type of man that I know I need to be. Not just in the rap and the hip hop world and shit. I mean, just as a real person, man, a father, a son, a brother, a friend, those type things, you know? <clears throat> and uh, very humbling experience, man. There was a lot of times where, uh, I don't, man, it was just crazy, you know what I mean? I can't even really explain it really in words, but there was a lot of times where you just question why a lot of things happen, why a lot of things kind of go down the way they do. And at the same time, it tests you. You know, you hit and you hit the bottom of the bottom, and then you got two decisions. This is only it's a it's an A and a B decision. It's fold and just accept and just live on. Or, nah, fuck that shit. I came too far. I did too much. I put too much into this, and I ain't, I'm I'm built better than that. You know, and then it really becomes that that simple. You either choose one or the other. Nothing's wrong with this decision. You know, ain't nothing wrong with just being regular and going about. <clears throat> life just being normal shit sometimes you know the chasing the other shit chasing the dreams and chasing what you really think you can do that shit's a headache like a motherfucker so ain't nothing wrong with this one but like I said I chose the other one man you know I was like I, I came too far I know that that what I've been blessed with as far as music go I feel it's, it's like a gift to me you know I feel like <clears throat> I ain't just do this shit just cuz you know what I mean I feel like it's something that that was some form of a calling. I, I've, I've said to many people before, uh, uh, everybody don't get a chance to do something where not only you can achieve a dream, something that seems like untouchable to, to the, the average person, you know, it, where the financial benefits are just crazy, you know, and you can have everything and take care of everybody and do, you know, pretty much whatever you want. A lot of people don't don't have that, that chance, you know what I mean? So there was a point for me where I felt like, would it be worse for me to actually just give it up now or would it be worse for me to just end up somewhere down and say, man, what could have been? Because I did have that chance. I did do it. You know what I mean? I didn't just stop just because. I stopped because I had some real life, personal life shit going on. But uh, I did it, baby. Like, we, 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 we traveled the world. We, we sold records. Like, we went around. We had radio success. You know, we, we did all those things. So it was almost to me like, <clears throat> you know what, man? it made sense after a while it really made sense because it really got down to the core of what what i believed in as a man and overall again man this ain't just about music right now we're talking about everything you know both sides of the coin you know and uh i felt all those humbling experiences that just made me feel like shit and you know i just smile in everybody's face but you know <laughs> behind closed doors you're like fuck yeah all those things man and uh um, uh, along with the with the triumphs that come with it, you know, because when you when you hit bottom and you do got the nuts to stand up and say, okay, fuck it, I don't care if I gotta go one step at a time, I'm gonna go, you know, and you do start, you know, knocking over one obstacle, another one here and there. After a while, you know, you start realizing, hey, you know what? You you look back at it and you're like, all right, yeah, knock me down, I'm gonna keep going, and I and I'm proving it. Not only am I thinking, I'm proving it. So there there's a lot of uh, gratifying moments in it. You know, I I did get a lot. <clears throat> closer to God throughout the years, you know, based on the, on the things that happened before. And, you know, my, my opinions on God ain't what I would consider everybody else's is. You know, I have my own relationship with Him, and that's what, what I believe in. Like, if you believe God is a woman, and uh, if you believe God is a seven-foot <laughs> uh, Hispanic woman with dreads, and that's your God, cool, you know what I mean? Like, if, if that God makes you wake up and, and do right and and just be cool with yourself and then cool. So I have my own version of, in my own relationship with, with God the way that I do. And you know, that was something that kind of helped me a lot. Looked in the mirror quite often, you know what I mean? And, and really check myself. I, I felt like, like that was one of the main things, you know, you gotta <clears throat> be real with yourself, you know what I mean? You gotta understand, accept the things that you did wrong. You know what I mean? Accept what you did wrong, any mistakes you made, don't point fingers, don't blame motherfuckers. Oh, man, please don't blame motherfuckers. Like, God, man, like, whether people do you wrong or whatever it is, at the end of the day, that's on you. You still allowed it to happen, you know? So, <clears throat> any mistakes, you know, like, accept them. Because you can't, you can't grow from them until you accept them. And after you accept them, you got to forgive yourself. You can't just beat yourself down to, and say you ain't worth shit. You know, you accept what you did wrong, you forgive yourself for those mistakes, and then you build off it. and there has to be a certain element of patience too I learned that along the way too you can't shit don't change this from one day to another you know it's real easy uh, 
you know, bad thoughts and bad habits, uh, <laughs> I mean, those, those, those are easy as hell. They're, they're easy to pick up and hard to break, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it is a process, and there's a lot of times where you might wake up one day and you don't feel like doing this shit, you know? You don't feel like doing all this stuff. You, you're looking at all the other responsibilities you got in the day-to-day, -day, you know, and you're like, damn, man, can I do this thing? And that's all right. That's all right. You just as long as you know in the back of your brain, I know what I'm built for and I know what I'm, where I'm going to end up and what I'm trying to do and that's all that matters, you know. I learned valuable lessons like that along the way, man. You know, I learned to actually not base all my happiness around my career with music. There was a lot of times where I did do that, you know. Now, actually, I'm more proud of the kind of father I am. I'm more proud of the kind of son I am, you know what I mean? The brother that I am for my sisters, the type of friend I am, I mean, Actually, now I care more about those things than anything else, you know, and uh, that changed me a lot, too, you know, and like I said, I've grown a lot through this whole shit, and uh, so now it's game time. I've been blessed. I, I ask for things. I ask God bless me, bless me with some good people behind me that believe in what I'm doing and see my vision, that uh, understand what, what we can possibly do. Uh, I've been blessed with those people, you know, and... Uh, Give me another opportunity to do it, you know, and at the end of the day, I just want to know that I left it all on the line, do what I did, and uh, and see what happens, you know, and so that's kind of where we at now, man. And so now, music-wise, which we don't get on that now, I'm ready to motherfucking kick some ass. <laughs> I mean, straight up and down, man. I mean, I, I feel like before, I'd never really got to just do, and that's not to kind of like talk shit or be nothing. I just, uh, I never felt like the whole scheme of what I'm able to do as an artist was ever presented correctly or maybe just time didn't allow it to be presented correctly so that's kind of where I'm at now you know I've grown tons and tons as an artist you know so I mean y'all gonna hear all different kind of stuff from me from you know obviously the rap shit that good old trap rap some good old boom chap hip-hop shit you know the storytelling and the stuff that 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 I love and what got me into the game but then also I've grown as a writer, you know, I've grown, my, my taste for music has grown. You know, just being an artist now, you got to understand that we don't make music just for us now. You know, we don't, there ain't a million <laughs> clones of me that are going to go line up and buy my records and stuff. So we have to understand as artists, we make music for people, you know, so <clears throat> I've, I've, I've dove off into different genres of music and stuff like that, still staying Rob, you know, still staying me, but just uh, expanding my ability as an artist and, you know, working with great producers out there and great singers and vocalists and uh, just really putting together some dope stuff like I'm doing the, the Spanish music you know I really want to get out here and compete in the Spanish market for making just r regular commercial radio Spanish music to a different new form of rap you know I feel being like an American Latino too we have a, a, a story that that ain't been all the way told yet you know I know we've had a lot of pioneers out there that that have represented I mean everybody know hands down I came in doing that shit, you know, I came in ever since I, I was busting freestyles at radio stations back in H-Town and throughout Texas, I was always representing and holding down the Browns since jump, you know, that was, that's what it is, you know. <clears throat> so, I mean, I, I just feel that we do have a an artistic story and something to tell, you know, from a level of the streets, from a level of just politics and the stuff that we deal with too, is, you know, like a lot of our parents you know, are immigrants and shit like that. I know mine are, you know, I know I'm the first person in my family born in the United States, you know what I mean? And I was actually made in another country, you know? I was, we was made in my, in my mom and daddy country and they just got me here on time to be born here and shit, you know? So, <clears throat> I, I, that's very close to heart to me, so I want to do that, you know? I want to kind of tell and try to bridge the gap between, you know, but, but it's like, like I say, I'm also, a kid from from Southwest Ailey, Texas, too. You know what I mean. And I'm also an American kid that grew up in American culture and stuff like that. But also grew up with a heavy Hispanic Latin background too. You know what I mean. It's every day. You know, and I don't. My name's not just the, a Hispanic name. Like I, Spanish is my first language. You know what I mean. So I want to be able to try to bridge the gap and tell that story. You know, and, and do it in a tasteful way, in a way where it can touch a lot of people and possibly show that that not only do we have an, an amazing culture and when I say when I represent Hispanics and Latinos I don't do it just from where I'm from because to me when you an American Latino and you're born here you ain't just grow you don't just grow up around yours you grow up around you know Mexicans Cubans Puerto Ricans 
Argentina, and I mean people from Central America, everywhere, you know what I mean? All, all types of folks. You know, me personally, y'all already know I'm from Uruguay, so I hold it down. Mm -mm. And y'all ain't gonna meet too many like that. So, salud a mi gente uruguaya. Ah. But yeah, so I, I want to tell the story, I want to bridge the gap, you know, and uh, <clears throat> do it in a tasteful way that can reach the masses. Uh, also, from a personal standpoint, I want to show my skills. I want to show that, that you know, I can, I can take it to different, li different levels, you know what I mean? I can play on different sides of the fence. And it, I feel it's my responsibility on the business side and, and our company's responsibility to brand it correctly now, you know what I mean? So that's, that's a challenge for us in itself. We know the music, we can do it now. We just got to tie it all together, give it to the channels that be and put it out there correctly, you know? And I really feel that we can create a big movement and, and hopefully just open doors like the other guys that's done for us in the past, you know? And, uh, <clears throat> I mean, we're doing the rock rap shit, the hip-hop mixtapes, we're gonna do everything, man. And, and even like what we're doing now with the Talk To Him Tuesday shits, the Freestyle Fridays and all that. I mean, just finally trying to get, you know, l let the people out there know you, and, and hopefully from, from that, I can grow, you know what I mean? And, and, and with y'all's comments and opinions, you know, I can grow too, you know? and, and we can all find a common ground in this shit. Maybe y'all can grow from the shit I'm saying, you know? So I, I feel that's the way the game is now with all the, <clears throat> with the social medias and just the access of internet and stuff and the way that people can just access music, you know? And so many people now, being able to access music has created people, have also given a lot of people a lane to put out their music, you know? So there's all kind of stuff out there, man. So I feel like you gotta think outside the box. You gotta try to touch people, you know, give them a reason to come fuck with you and holler at you and, you know, relate to you. So, I mean, with that being said, that's kind of like where I'm at now. I got a great team behind me. Uh, you know, our main goal, obviously, is to take this to the, to the level where we're competing with, you know, the top-notch artists out there. Obviously, set ourselves up in a, in a position independently to, to be able to self-sustain and do on our own. You know, we got key pieces and, and key guys on the team that pretty much everybody plays their position and covers their bases. Big shot to them too. And y'all know who y'all are, so I'm sitting in the room with me right now. But uh, without y'all boys, I couldn't do this shit, man. So I take that shit to heart. So every time that I open up my pad and get to writing these rhymes, I'm trying to kill shit for y'all, for myself, and for our family so we can all get Lambos and mansions with lazy rivers around them motherfuckers and all kind of shit. Yeah, so straight up. Uh, the people out there, I guess I'm gonna talk to them now. And uh, I mean, that's kind of like a just of it, man. I mean, uh, this is very serious for us. We, we, we know that without y'all, we can't, we can't do this shit. So whether you love it or you hate it, man, I just, in some way, shape, form, or fashion, I appreciate that you're even taking the time to listen, all right? And uh, we promise we're gonna bring y'all that shit bring you that fire and uh, just try to grow as people as artists and, and take this shit to another level, you know? Everybody out there in the hood, every kid with a pen and a pad and just want to do something, man, don't, I don't care if it, even if it ain't with rap, if, if it's whatever. If you got a passion, if you got something in your heart, do it, follow it, go for it. I mean, if not, life's pretty fucking boring other than that, so <laughs> we should all aspire to be fucking something because if not, I mean, what the hell else are we living for, you know? So uh, I definitely commend anybody with the Wavos to wake up every day and just be responsible, hold their families, and, and, and just try to make it better for themselves. Much respect from me, Rob G. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, man, it's on. So that's pretty much what it is, man. That's me, that's what's been going on, that's what's happening. Gave you a brief little description of how it started uh, and where it's going. So. Definitely want to hear y'all's comments, and uh, I don't know, we, we might knock out some other topics. We might talk about trifling broads and sorry dudes. Uh, we're going to talk about the finals. Definitely going to talk about the finals, good old NBA finals and all that. But uh, real talk, we appreciate y'all's time, all right? Talk to them Tuesdays. Rob G, Roberto Gale. Holla. Hey, what up, y'all? It's Rob G, a.k.a. Roberto Gale. I had to make a little pit stop real quick and come holler at y'all. We right in the middle of doing some Talk To Him Tuesday stuff, interviews, different things like that. But I had to let y'all know what's out there right now. First and foremost, you can pick up Paper Plates, one of my singles featuring Chameleon Air. And that's going to be on an upcoming project called The Rise of the American Latino, coming out this summer, 2014. You want some Spanish music? I got a new single out there called Aquí Estoy. 
new video done by Compound Films and Epic Motion Pictures. I know y'all seen that. It's going down. You can pick that up too. And that's off the self-titled Spanish EP that I'm putting out called Roberto Gale. Now, for the Gale Rock EP, which is also coming out this summer, we got a brand new single out there called Cloud of Love. New video done by, by my boys up there at Epic Motion Pictures. Super dope. Make sure you check it out and go get that single. If you want some mixtape stuff, you can go to the website www.robgonline.com. We got Back At It, the mixtape on there. You can go on and download that for free along with all my other mixtapes that's been out before. And we also got La Colección in stores now too. iTunes everywhere, all over the place, wherever you want to get it. And that's featuring everybody. That got all my hits on there from repping my block to How You Like Me Now <clears throat> to For The Hood with Rick Ross. I mean, the features on there is crazy. You're talking Slim Thug, Chameleon there, Rick Ross, like I said, my boy Trey The Truth, Pokey, Kiki, ESG. I mean, everybody and their mamas. I mean, the list literally just goes on and on. Uh, so, yeah, man, my music's out there. Make sure you go pick it up. We definitely appreciate the support. Stay tuned for all the projects we got coming out, like Seven Letter Love Songs for the Ladies and uh, some more Spanish mixtapes and just all kind of stuff, man. All right? and we just want to let everybody know that want to get and keep up with everything we're doing online. You know what I mean? You can check me out, www.robgonline.com. You want to check me out on the Twitter, please follow, retweet, do all that stuff, man. It's at Team Rob G. If you want to get at me on the Facebook, it's Facebook slash Team Rob G. And finally, on the Instagram, Rob G underscore Roberto Gale. I promise I'm going to do a better job of interacting and getting with y'all on the social media, man. So y'all follow me. If you didn't get any of that information, all you got to do is just look below and it's going to be right there, man. All right. Check us out. Thank you for your time. Rob G, next Latin legend. We're in the building. Let's go. Yeah.